Everything around me collapses, an entire army dies, day and night burn, and officers care only for reports on the temperature. I don't know much about war, no human being has died by my hand and I have never fired live ammunition from my pistol. But I know one thing very well, no army has shown even an ounce of understanding for its men. This is a fragment of a letter written by a German soldier who participated in the Battle of Stalingrad, the fierce confrontation that took place between August 23, 1942 and February 2, 1943. The text demonstrates the precarious state of morale of the Germans during those days, the events in Stalingrad were the bloodiest of the Second World War. Casualties numbered in the millions, the city was reduced to rubble, and the horrors experienced there tore the minds of the soldiers, haunting them for the rest of their lives. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will show you the most chilling testimonies of the German soldiers who participated in the Battle of Stalingrad. The Battle of Stalingrad occurred in the context of Case Blue, the offensive plan designed by the German army to take over southern Russia in the summer of 1942. Operation Barbarossa, with which the Third Reich had invaded the previous year the Soviet Union, had failed in its goal of subduing the communist nation. Now the Nazis were getting their revenge, and were trying to hack the Russian economy by taking control of its oil wells. Adolf Hitler was aware that Germany urgently needed fresh supplies of fuel, as it was the vital resource for his army to function. Thus, a huge contingent, led by Generals Hermann Hoth and Friedrich Paulus, marched on Stalingrad. This city was of great strategic importance due to its location. Whoever controlled it would have access to the oil of the Caucasus and, at the same time, would take over the Volga River, which would allow the mobilization of troops and resources through this route. Before we continue, we want to invite you to discover our new channel, Military Might. Here we'll carry out in-depth analyzes of the most powerful, modern and surprising weapons of war in the world. So, if you like military weaponry, you must check out Military Might. You'll find the link to the channel in the description and in the first comment. Let's go on. The Battle of Stalingrad began in August 1942 and initially the advantage went to the Germans, who managed to conquer it thanks to heavy Luftwaffe bombing and superior tanks. With the city in rubble, the fighting broke out house to house and street to street, so that by mid-November the Nazis believed themselves victorious. That, however, was nothing more than an illusion, because the Soviet counteroffensive immediately began, with the Germans locked inside Stalingrad, unable to receive help from abroad. Hitler's soldiers lived through a real hell, which they did not hesitate to put into words whenever they had the opportunity. Currently, we have abundant letters and memoirs written by them, which allow us to reconstruct the horrors of that battle. Lieutenant Colonel Friedrich Rosk commanded an infantry regiment that fought intensely against the Soviets, and he described it this way, the Russians clung to the ruins of their city with a mixture of determination, courage, and stubbornness. They were so intent on it that we could barely advance a few meters, and if they found a gap in our defenses, they would rush there and force us to organize a counteroffensive. In general, none of us slept at night, and during the day we rested in shifts, one hour of sleep, one hour on duty. In December 1942 winter began and the temperature plummeted to minus 20 degrees Celsius, wreaking havoc among the German troops. The hardships of the cold are the subject of testimonies like this, in our battalion, in the last two days alone, we had lost 60 men victims of hypothermia, and more than 30 men had fled. We had almost no ammunition left, the soldiers had eaten absolutely nothing in three days and the legs of many of them were frozen. As a result, many soldiers had limbs amputated, thus increasing the number of disabled troops they had to deal with. Stalingrad's makeshift medical wards were overwhelmed. Carl Wolf, a communications non-commissioned officer, remembers it this way, you didn't know where to start with the patients. There was nowhere to put them, and lacking the means to keep them warm, after a few hours they would freeze to death. Once the death toll reached staggering proportions it was decided to fill a ravine with corpses. It was not always possible to identify them all, sometimes up to a thousand dead lay there, unburied, because graves could not be dug in the ground hard as bone. 
On the other hand, the lack of food became common, and the high command could not organize the correct provisioning of the army. Lieutenant Colonel Rosk wrote the following. The food is poor, and there is no time or possibility to eat in peace. Last night I brought chocolates and cigarettes to my troop, it was something I saved for when the situation got desperate. However, at night the Russians attacked us and tried to capture the supplies. When there were no more rations, the soldiers crossed unsuspected limits, as this letter shows. Yesterday they gave us vodka. At that time we had just killed a dog, and the vodka suited us wonderfully. In total I have already killed four dogs, although my companions no longer want to eat them anymore. Once I even shot a magpie and boiled it. The spirits of the men were on the ground, and many began to question their loyalty to Hitler. A letter expresses those doubts as follows. The Fuhrer made us a promise to get us out of here, and we firmly believed him. Even now I keep the faith, because I have to believe in something. All my life, at least eight years of it, I believed in the Fuhrer and his word, but it is terrible how others doubt, and I am ashamed to listen to complaints without being able to answer them, because the facts are on their side. Morale was so low that even winning a fight did not cheer the Germans, who were already fed up with so much death and suffering. We can see this feeling embodied in this writing. On Tuesday I destroyed two Soviet tanks, and then walked past the smoking wreckage. A body hung from the turret, head down, its feet trapped, its legs burning up to the knees. The body was alive, the mouth grimacing in horrible pain, but there was no chance of freeing him. Even if there had been, he would have died after a few hours of torture. I shot him, and when I did, tears ran down my cheeks. Now I have been crying for three nights for that dead Russian tanker, whose murderer I am. I'm afraid I'll never sleep peacefully again if I come back to you. My life is a terrible contradiction, a psychological monstrosity. Despite Hitler's orders to defend Stalingrad at any cost and not hand it over to the Soviets, General Friedrich Paulus had no choice but to negotiate the surrender of the German army in February 1943. It is estimated that the Germans and their allies suffered between 700 and 870,000 casualties, 900 planes shot down, 1,500 tanks destroyed and 6,000 pieces of artillery disabled. On the Soviet side, things were no better, since they suffered more than a million casualties and lost 2,700 planes, 4,300 tanks and 15,000 artillery pieces. Case Blue was a failure although the German soldiers were relieved to learn of the surrender since, as we can see, the experience was hell. We have reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, what do you think was the scariest thing about the Battle of Stalingrad? Leave your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.